Hey guys, Alex the Maniac here. Uh, today I want to talk about this footage actually was supposed to be a footage about the butler on a constellation so it could be an Alfred or a Herbert or whatever his name would be and his life uh, serving on a constellation as a butler but um, I don't have the complete footage and it's some fun footage I got out of this I have uh, two Connies going head to head at the end so I'm gonna show you that as well but while I show you that footage I wanted to talk about the procedural tech and especially because uh, what triggered me was first a tweet from Brian Chambers and he actually gave us this picture and I think I looked at that picture for a couple of minutes and just started imagining you know and thinking about it and planets and you'll go down you'll fly down you'll fly around it and then you'll land wherever you want and you'll have wildlife and aliens and you know caves and mountains and what the fuck not i mean you know ancient architecture and and uh, artifacts and what i don't know like like shit load of different stuff you know uh, it's it's mind-boggling i'm i'm just yeah blacking out here you know i started hyper ventilating when i saw the picture as well so i'm just again just blown away but the point is uh, the boundary is finally broken we are now in a historical moment moment where uh, the boundary in a game is broken nothing is impossible anymore after this technology like after this procedural check and you can see that in, in No Man's Sky as well now the problem with No Man's Sky is they didn't go the extra step and make the gameplay you know mind-blowing as well I think that's where it's gonna a bit fail because once you visit it I don't know 10 15 50 different planets and you press one button to initiate a scan and then go to a tower and just press a, another button and you uploaded your findings you know and that's it that's your exploring that's the gameplay of your finding a new species and then uh, getting paid for that information so to say you know that's your only gameplay and that's gonna suck after like two hours five ten hours of doing the same shit it doesn't matter that the planet looks different you're doing the same fucking shit over and over again you know it's uh it's start it's gonna start to wear on you so i mean that's just me maybe you know you you like stuff differently i don't know i'm just uh this is from my point of view let's say it like that so uh you know, this procedural tech is actually allowing now to build worlds, to build whole fucking planets. And what blew me away is, is, and I'm gonna use a few clips from the British and Con and then Board Gamer uploaded like the whole uh, developer panel when they asked them questions. I have a few tidbits, you know, that just blew me away, and I, I want to show to you guys. So, uh, uh, and I prepared a few pictures as well, just to, you know, kick off your imagination a bit about the stuff that's that's coming. What actually helped us get all this information about the procedural tech and how far uh, far along it is and uh, what's happening right now is the Star Citizen magazine that came out in Germany. And uh, they were at their office in Frankfurt, spent the whole day there and they got to play the procedural tech they got to fly the ships to fly to a planet and to fly into land and to get out of their ship and walk around and see all that stuff so um i'll show you these uh, pictures from the magazine as well but uh you know when i look at these i see a, a totally new world opening you know at a, a, a moment in time where we are at the edge of, of a technology breakthrough I would call it you know and and where the only thing that's gonna stop games being awesome is the imagination you know it's 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 come to that and and uh, you, if you don't believe me let me let me just show you one clip here Brian Chambers talking about the procedural tech and the, the technology that they got and the tools that they actually created for the designers now listen to this so we've also created a series of tool sets that the artists um, will be able to use where they can sit on top of the procedural and very quickly paint in 
what they need or paint out what they don't need. Um, there's more information that's in the article that starts talking about it, and you guys will get more information here really, really soon. Um, as an example, and I'll try to make it quick, let's say we have a, a mountainous planet, and we want to dig in an area and have it more gameplay, and we want more shrubbery, more rocks, and more grass. We have a tool set where that artist could easily go in with their, their tablet, their Wacom tablet, and they are pushing and pulling terrain, right? And that's live in Indian, they click a button and boom, it's physicalized. Next step that they do, they go, cool, we're going to place these, they bring in their buildings and place them. And now they want edges to have more shrubbery and all that. They will put in what we just call like a bucket, and they'll say, cool, I'm going to put three types of grass in here, I'm going to put four types of rocks, and I'm going to put these small shrubs. They can now take those, those are all in their bucket, and they can paint those in. Every single rock that drops will have a slightly different orientation, a slightly different depth, maybe even slightly variation of color, and those are all variables we can change. Um, and just imagine what I just said there, and that concept expanding and expanding and expanding to even larger things and full trees and so on. So again, I can, we can paint in. The other day, uh, I walked by Sasha, one of our, our programmers, desk, and he was on a planet, zoomed out, so it kind of filled up his whole screen. And he uh, spelled my name in trees. <laughs> and then he, he clicked a button, and he was in that level, blowing the trees up. And the splinters were coming off of him, right? Boom! And it's physicalized. That's what got me. And the other thing, at the end, when he said, like, he built that thing, with his name with trees and whatnot. But he destroyed those trees and splinters were, were flying anywhere. That means destructible environment. I mean, I honestly am scared. I didn't dream that. I didn't dare dream that, that we'll have destructible environments. When you have this awesome environment in the first place, I mean, to be completely destructible I mean I suppose not all things will be destructible but still they're gonna make the effort that the uh, environment around you is destructible if you shoot a laser gun at it it's gonna fucking blow up or, or you know split up or go to pieces or whatnot I mean it's mind-boggling but I hope you kind of understand now you see the tool set like boom it's physicalized so it's done it's it's in that world it's done you can go right there it's a level it's whatever you want it to be I mean it's literally boundless uh, the only boundary now is the imagination what, what will you do with that as he said this is a tool set that will expand. Imagine that for, for anything you want, you know? It just needs to, This is the first iteration of such tool set for procedural generated content. But in a year, two, five from now, that tool set is gonna be like uh, click, build whatever you want. Pup, it's right there. There it is. You can go in there, do fly, shoot, you know, fuck, whatever you want, do whatever to. I mean, it's uh, that's what I mean. Like the boundary is finally broken, and we have this uh, privilege. That's the word I'm looking for to be right there and to watch it happen. Not only watch it happen, but play it. I mean, and play it in the best way possible because the love, the care, the, the attention to detail that goes into this game. And uh, I mean, the whole uh, panel, developer panel, is, is awesome. I, I recommend you go to Board Gamers channel and watch the whole thing because it's freaking cool. But I have a cutout for something else and I'll show you here uh, for the love and the detail. And there's a little story that Brian Chambers told you know, because they asked him how uh, about Squadron 42, you know, and, and, and how it's going to be, will it be replayable, you know, because it's a single player game, it's cinematics and stuff, will you be able to play that two, three times in a row, or when you're, once you're through it, you know, you won't have anything else to find in there, so it's not going to be that much replayable and stuff like that, you know, they, they asked him, so this is what he said about uh, how good is it going to be? From the performances that were on stage as well, you were there a lot there too. I mean, uh, when they opened this, when it was Chris that opened this, uh, gave a little the speech uh, at the very beginning to kick this off. I was there when Gary Oldman did that, right? 
and I'll just paint the scenario and make it quick. But we're there, you're at a mocap stage. Hustle and bustle, there's like 30 people, we're setting up cameras, you got the audio guys, you got this, we're testing stuff, we're level streaming in, we're bringing in props. And it's, it's proper, right? It's, it's hustle and bustle all around. Gary only comes in, and we set up his face and all that cool. Hustle and bustle is still going on. He's pacing back and forth, just along the stage. Everyone's passing him. We all know he's there, but you know. And he's got his hands behind his back, and he's just pacing back and forth. And back and forth. We pulled in the podium. That's the piss prop piece for the him to come up. Uh, about an hour before, his agent and was talking with me and one of the other producers. He said, oh, did you hear Gary's... Gary's doing up with the character. Because Gary always a, he's a, a method actor, right? He really gets into character. And he said, no, he's an off. Um, as we're still finishing setting up the set, we have the podium in there. Gary walks up onto the podium, gives his speech in full character, beginning to end. Cameras aren't rolling. Everybody in the room, so like 40 people, all stopped. I got goosebumps right now thinking about it. We all stopped and went. It was like you could have heard a pin drop in that. Right. Um, I just give that because to, that small story to say, you know, we're putting as much into this as we can. Uh, the performances, the drive of the characters, I think it's going to be something that when it comes out, and we're we've really polished it the way that we know we can. Where we want to, I think it's going to be something that is is extremely unique and extremely special that comes out. You should definitely go and check out the whole uh, interview because he talked about so much stuff, and it's so great to see. Uh, he even talked about how uh, people, when he hired people for the uh, Frankfurt office, because there was like five people when they started, uh, and they were building out the team. They had talented, very very talented people come. And they turned them back because they didn't, as, as he said, they didn't geek out on this space stuff, you know? They, they didn't have that passion for this space simulation and, and going into space and being able to, you know, fly and whatnot. Uh, they just didn't have the passion for it. And even though they were extremely talented people, but it's just, you know, they didn't have the love for it. So not only did they look for talented people, they looked for people who would do this with passion and with love and, and you know, with the care that we, that are sitting back here and geeking out and all this stuff that we would do, you know. So that's just amazing to hear. That's why I said, like, I recommend you watch the whole thing. They, they talked about a lot of great stuff, you know, when you, when you look at the AI, I wanted to touch on, on that as well a little bit, but I won't insert any more clips. I see they, they take too long and it's it just, just go and watch the whole thing. It's much better, really. And I, I can't, my English just fucking preventing me to explain to you guys everything they said in detail because I can't remember the exact words and then I uh, start to, yeah, you see, get pissed off and it just starts to, to aggravate me and it goes into wrong direction and I'm just rambling now. See, it, it just fucks up everything. So I rather use these clips you know and and link this site and and not no disrespect to board game or anything that's I'm so thankful that he did that it's it's great to see that and I love that personal touch you know I can see so much from people when they talk and and how they talk and what they're saying and how they're saying and stuff like that you can see then if somebody's doing that with passion or with love or does he care about it or does he not and shit like that I'm rambling again so, so imagine the tools they have now and when the game goes live you, you have people saying like you have you you will have only hundred system you know you have elite dangerous where you have millions and thousands yeah you have millions of uh, systems with nothing in it you, that's great you can have 10 billion trillion million systems when there's nothing in there i mean what's the fucking point that number means shit so uh, imagine when the game goes live. See, I, I'm going in the wrong direction again. I'm trying to pull myself back. So, imagine when the game goes live, and with all this technology, how fast they can pull, uh, they can put together 
new systems and put them out there. Chris Roberts already confirmed plenty of times they will not make updates that will be once in three months or six months or something like that. They will update it weekly. So you can count on at least monthly, let's say like that. But he said, I, I specifically heard him say they would put out a system in a week, for example. And I suppose he meant something like this, because with this technology, that's really possible. But you can, let's say, in a month, you know, every month you will have at least one new system that you know of. Maybe you won't even know of. They will leave systems for players to discover. Of course they will. I mean, that's the whole point. You can hear that in their talk about exploration over and over again. Now, the fight with Tikani is, has begun, but I'll, I'll finish up quickly here. The, the worlds are full and living. The AI that they're building is freaking amazing. And, and Brian Chambers mentioned that on this uh, developer panel also. And, and what he says, if there is a profession that a player can do it, the AI has to be able to do it as well. And not only will the AI live and breed and do all that, but they will have hobbies, they will react and the, to the point where a barman, if you break a glass, he will react, he will go there to pick up the shards, but if he hears, hears shots as well, those shots will have priority of course and he will not care about the fucking glass, but he will, I don't know, duck or call security or whatever his, you know, options will be, what he can do. But. I mean, that's the level of detail they're going for. I mean, I hear now that we will have destructible environments and shit. I mean, fucking hell. I mean, where... Where is the boundary, you know? Where is the things that they can't do? I don't know, it's just... It doesn't matter. We are now witnessing something absolutely amazing. And I had to make this video and just share that with you guys. These are just my thoughts. You know, leave me a comment, leave me your thoughts. Are you as fucking excited as I am? Because this is an amazing period to be a gamer, you know, that's what blows me away. I, I, I don't think we could have had to pick a better time to, to uh, invest in a game and, and be so passionate about it. And, and it's turning out to be the, the game changer, literally the game changer after uh, which games will become, you know, limitless. You will have literally universes full of, I don't know what, but, you know, stuff that you can go explore, shoot, trade, you know, I... I don't have enough English words in my vocabulary, so I can expand on that a little bit more. Sorry, yeah, it will come. I'll, I'll practice, I'll practice. So, thank you guys for watching. You know, leave me your thoughts. I would love to hear what you have to say about it, or am I the only one idiot here, like super excited and, as, as Brian Saber says, geeking out here on, on this shit. And um, I'll talk to you guys next time. Enjoy the, the, the fight to the end without me rambling around. So thank you guys for watching and see you all next time. One eternity later.